thanks for returning. I have to apologize. I messed up where I had posted um, episode 16, season 3. Posted that before episode 15. So if um, you watched 16 and you were a little confused, it's because 15 was missing. Um, actually, I called 16 15 and then I fixed it. So those two were just flip-flopped. Um, I hope that's not too confusing, and thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching. You know, this is um, some of the most difficult times in my life that I'm talking about, and I'm trying to um, do my best being careful, um, uh, you know, not to hurt anybody while I'm doing it, because I do want to be honest. I have to be honest, but, um, you know, not going into any um, gory details which there were plenty of, you know, between um, things that went on with the kids and my husband um, during this whole difficult time. So thanks for bearing with me. Um, my life is going to get a little more fun, maybe, in a way. Um, but I do want to um, add here a couple things. Thinking about my marriage, what I did leave out, what I forgot about, was um, some of the nice visits we had. Um, my friend Lynn from New Jersey, uh, who I had not seen, I did see her at the reunions, but she never came to visit me uh, in California or Atlanta until during this time when we had the new house. She came down, she actually came down on business, but she did um, come and spend some time with me and she got to meet my husband. Uh, she met him, I think, at the reunion already, but you know. We all spent time together. That was nice. And then my friend Sherry, who was from my, um, since I was seven years old, she came also to that house and spent Christmas with us one year. And that was real nice in the new house, in the big, nice, beautiful house. And another time um, when Mark and I went down to Sanibel Island in Florida for a vacation, and Sherry came and out there and met up with us, brought her daughter, her little daughter. She was nine, I think, at that time. And um, Mark rented a boat and took us out on the boat and um, took us out to dinner, and we had a real good time. Um, so I wanted to insert those. Oh, and also, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but my sister, my sister, my half-sister from Japan, yes, she came to both houses. I think I might have mentioned that last time. And my niece uh, from Japan. My niece could talk a little bit of English, but my sister couldn't talk any. But they both loved Mar Mark, and um, he, uh, you know, really liked them a lot, too. So that was all good and all. It was very sad, everything that happened. Um, Anyway, I'm going to move on now. So I am living now in the apartment, a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment. I got in Alpharetta right near my job because my job after 9-11, my job up in the high um, high rise uh, down at the Ravinia, um, they put the whole finance department in a flat building after 9-11 um, in a flat building in Alpharetta. So I um, was working there, um, going in a lot, working from home um, part-time still. Um, and also during this time, I got another, um, I started to do my own business. Um, my job in Continental Hotels now, they actually told us, like they, you know, they always good companies, smart companies do projections and all that, you know, over the five years forecasting and stuff. And, and they told us that they saw some hard times coming and, you know, 9-11 just happened and all, you know. Um, so they actually said, you might all want to be looking. <laughs> so I decided to go for this, um, uh, selling air purifiers. Uh, it was a multi-level marketing thing. It was uh, EcoQuest. It was originally Alpine. Turned into EcoQuest. Then it changed to Volara. But um, selling air purifiers, really good quality, best kind of air purifiers, NASA um, technology and all. 
And I um, started doing that so I would have something to fall back on if I lost my job. And um, that was pretty good. Uh, I really believed in those air purifiers, and I sold quite a few of them. But, you know, it was multi-level marketing, so I never made any money. <laughs> never made I actually did it for 10 years on the side. Never made a penny. Um, always took a loss on my income tax, which was very helpful for that. And, and I um, uh, was not able to get anybody active to um, sign up underneath me. Never made money like that. Never made money because you only make like 30% on those multi-level marketing things when you first get in. It's like 30% profit. And then, you know, you got your advertising. You got to buy samples. You got to, you know, travel around, drive around. You got all your expenses. And you start out by selling to all your friends. And, you know, they're all looking for a discount, of course, so you don't make a penny. Um, actually took a loss, but like I say, that's good for your income tax. So um, did that for 10 years um, on the side, and then it got to be too much for me after a while. Uh, too much driving into Atlanta. When, after all my friends had bought a unit, <laughs> I have to start selling to the public. And um, it was too much driving around. I didn't like driving in Atlanta going to strangers' houses and all. I didn't like that. I didn't like lifting, carrying those machines around either. And then when if they had a problem, they're calling you, and then you have to ship it back to get it repaired. And, you know, it, it was just too much, and it was not lucrative. So I dropped that after 10 years. I was doing it. And um, what else? Uh, I guess... Oh, I also, when I was, during this time when I was um, living in Alpharetta, I started going to Andy Stanley's North Point Church, uh, which was right across from my job, pretty much set back off the main street, but um, it was right there close to where I live. And I told you I had started back to the Methodist Church, but now I moved away from Sugar Hill. And, uh, of course, there's Methodist churches all around. But I had heard about this North Point church, so I did go visit one day by myself. And I was totally blown away. Oh, my goodness. It was just so awesome. I, I never <laughs> could imagine anything like it. It was so big, so many people. Um, and so the music was just, you know, it was just like watching a, a you know, uh, one of the best pop bands on stage, you know, the music was so perfect. Uh, and I loved Andy from the get go, loved Andy. He, um, he had, had broke away from the, his dad was, is, is, was very famous, um, uh, Baptist pastor in Atlanta and, uh, Charles Stanley. And um, he had broke away from him when he was young to start a different type of church. Um, um, the basic beliefs were pretty much the same as the Baptist, but a whole different style, a whole different approach. Um, and it was just awesome. And, and Andy is just the greatest. Um, uh, it's one of the biggest mega churches in the country. And now they have a lot of satellite churches that they've um, started all around. But it, he was so right on spot, perfect with my way of thinking. Everything that I didn't like about Seventh-day Adventist Church, um, all of my theology, you know, my own, because I'm a very much... Um, uh, creative thinker, out-of-the-box thinker. I make my own opinions. I don't like to listen to other people's opinions. I like to form my own. Anyway, he was just right on, spot on every kind of thought that I ever had. He was, he just said it so right, and I just loved him. I went to that church for 15 years. When I first started going, I went by myself. I sat alone for many years, and I prayed and prayed and prayed that my son would come with me. Um, 
And finally, after several years of sitting alone, he started coming with me. And I'll have more talk about that church later. Uh, but um, those are things that started at that time. Also, I had, um, let's see, the t I think I have plenty of time left here. Yeah. So I, um, freshly divorced, I decided that I did not want to, um, I had no interest in men. I was just done. I was like done with men. I was um, 50 years old. Uh, I just married twice now. I felt like, you know, I'm not looking anymore. I don't. I don't want anybody coming on to me. I just was done with men, couldn't take the, the stress of the whole idea of dating or anything. Um, so I told you that we had the RV, right? Well, the RV, we did lose everything and everything was gone pretty much, but um, we were subleasing the RV, so we were still being able to make some payments on that. And it came time to um, renew the registration. Now, Mark had left the country. He um, needed a break. I don't know how he had the money, but somehow he was able to go on an extended vacation out of the country. Um, so I um, met this guy that was uh, renting our RV. I met him at the motor vehicle, the tag office. Um, I had already met him before because, you know, he was renting the vehicle from us, but this time I went alone to meet him and there was a big long line that day and this guy was just about my age and he was from New York and big long line and you know typical responses to be you know a little bit pissed because you know who wants to wait in line for 30 minutes or more but we just started talking and he had a good personality. You know, he was a New Yorker with a good sense of humor and we just clicked right away and I was just cracking up at him. He was making me laugh. Um, we were just having a good time in the line and didn't care how long it took because we were enjoying it. And um, I had all my hair cut off. I cut off all my hair. That was my act of... Um, you know, just showing like, I don't care about men anymore. Cause I know men mostly like long hair. And, um, I figured, you know, I don't even want to attract any. So I cut all my hair off. I mean, this long is like half an inch all over my head. And, um, I remember I came from work that day and, uh, I mean, I, I was, you know, dressed like business casual, um, nothing sexy at all. And, uh, Anyway, that night, went home, went to bed, and um, I'm going to tell you something that works, okay? You guys, <laughs> you got your sights on a gal. This worked for me. So, 2 o'clock in the morning, my phone rings. Now, I do have a cell phone by now. <laughs> and um, 2 o'clock in the morning, he calls me, and he said, I can't sleep. I just can't stop thinking about you. He said, we had so much fun just standing in the line in the stupid office today. He said, you know, I want to see you again. Uh, can I take you to dinner tomorrow night? So I went and um, started seeing this guy, you know, which was not my plan at all, but it just happened. And um, it happened. It happened really quick and it was not good. Um, unbelievable so we went to dinner you know and um you know we started seeing each other and um he took me to, to his house it was just off the chain unbelievable I never saw a house like that before I mean it was um I don't know how many bedrooms it was a mansion you know he had a whole lot of property and a great big long winding um private driveway, way back off the road, um, huge mansion. He had a, it was either six or eight car garage, to give you an idea, and every stall had a vehicle in it. One was a motorcycle, but otherwise he had all these vehicles. Um, 
marble, heated marble floors inside the house. Um, just unbelievable. I mean, the man was, you know, very wealthy and um, owned a very, 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 very big business. Um, so I was uh, going over there and I thought that, um, oh my goodness, I just thought God was blessing me. Um, after all that I had been through for five years, I just felt like, oh my goodness, God has just blessed me with this, um, you know, rich <laughs> guy <laughs> who likes me, even though I have no hair. You know, I thought this guy must really like me because I have no hair and he still wants to see me. He still likes me, you know, so I thought that was a good thing. He was Jewish, which um, I didn't have a big problem with that. Um, you know, I would prefer a Christian, but being Jewish, you know, they're God's people too. And, um, uh, anyway, I, I, I didn't have a big problem with that, especially I think because of my Seventh-day Adventist background, you know, I knew a lot about how, you know, Sabbath and all that kind of stuff. He was, he wasn't like a practicing, you know, Jew. He was, you know, it's just what he was. Um, not big on all this holidays and stuff. Most of them are really, I heard that most Jews are actually atheists. He, you know, he might have been one of them. I don't know. But um, so I was with him for a while, and I thought that God gave me this gift of um, this rich guy. Um, but um, it wasn't going real good. And then one day I went over there and um, he says, so I, I went, he was in the bedroom when I got there. I went in the bedroom, took off my coat. He was laying on the bed and he had his phone right there next to him. And he says, um, I have something to tell you. And I said, um, okay, so. He says, uh, I met somebody and I'm like, okay. So I started to grab my coat again. I was ready to leave. And he says, no, 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 come back here. You don't understand. He said, she wants to meet you. And he flips the phone. He had her on speed dial, called this girl. He says, she's 19 and she's Cuban. Now I was 50 years old or 51 or 52, something like that. And then I realized that he was looking for a threesome and um, it just disgusted me. I couldn't do that. I, I and <laughs> Lord knows if I was going to do it, it certainly wouldn't be with a 19 year old, <laughs> you know, but I had no, I was never inclined like that. And then it clicked in my head that in his bathroom, he had a jacuzzi that was a triangle. So it was like a three seat jacuzzi. And when I first saw that in his bathroom, I thought, well, that's odd. I've never seen a, a triangular shaped jacuzzi like that. Never thought about it being for three people. Um, so anyway, that, you know, just blew me off, took my coat, left. And I felt so so stupid um, for falling for him, um, for thinking that God put us together, for, you know, just being impressed by all of his stuff he had, you know, that house and the cars and all that. Um, you know, if you, if you watched all my previous episodes, you know, I live very low in California and, you know, I'm very earthy, natural kind of person. I don't need a whole lot of richness around me, but I did get a little bit used to it being with my um, second husband, um, you know, but I didn't need it. And to think that I went for all that, uh, I got conned by it basically. Um, I don't know. It was just disgusted me. I was so upset with myself, so upset and disappointed with myself. So what happened was, um, like the next day I went to work, 
I was at work at my job and um, I was so upset I, I could feel the um, tears welling up like I was going to start crying and I don't cry much. I usually hold it in. I'm one of those types that I just, I don't cry much, hardly ever. And, um, but when it comes out, it's like a flood because I hold it back. I hold it back and I knew it was welling up in me. I probably hadn't cried since five years ago when Jerry died. And, um, so it was welling up in me, the whole divorce thing. And to think that I fell for this guy and, um, I felt it coming on. So I told the lady that sat next to me at my job, who I was friends with, I told her everything that happened. And I said, I'm going to the ER at lunchtime and I'm not coming back. I said, I can just feel something happening inside me. I'm not going to be able to come back. It's going to be ugly, <laughs> you know? And, um, I, I asked her to tell the boss. So I went to the ER and when I got there, um, first of all, my other girlfriend, Lourdes, my sweetheart girlfriend who I had at my job that I ate lunch with all the time, you know, she, um, followed me to the hospital and, um, so when I got up there to check in, the dam burst and I started crying when I was, it was check-in time. I was supposed to be telling the lady what was wrong with me and I couldn't talk. I just started crying hysterically. It just all came out and, um, they checked me in to the hospital and they put me again, they put me in the mental hospital. Um, I was having a total break breakdown, meltdown, whatever you want to call it. This time was worse than the other time. I wasn't drunk, you know, I, I mean, and I knew that I needed help this time. It was me going for help. I knew I needed help. So I went to the same um, hospital that I went to last time, but this time I checked myself in and I was wanting to stay there. I knew I needed it. I really needed to stay there. So I was there for like a week and it was really good for me. I had group therapy. I had private therapy and everybody treated me very well. It was really what I needed. And I would encourage anybody, if you're feeling that bad, don't be scared of it. You know, I mean, you know, maybe check out the facility first, make sure it's a good one. But, um, uh, it was good. It was really what I needed. And I was in group therapy with all these other depressed. I was, I was diagnosed with depression. Um, and I was in, uh, group therapy with all these other depressed people. And let me tell you, the stories I heard from them were really, you know, worse than what I was going through. I mean, like, you know, one woman, her husband was murdered and, you know, horrible, horrible, sad stories. And, um, anyway, it helped me. And after that, I did get on Prozac and I had to go to a psychiatrist after that for two years, I was on Prozac and, um, seeing a psychiatrist and then I got better and all that. So that's my story for today. Um, I love you guys for watching, for caring. And, um, I hope somehow that, um, watching my story might help you or help you to help somebody else. And, um, I have a lot more things to come. So take care. God bless.